Well, uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our second instalment of the, the Easter series that we're, we're doing. We had Carl and Becca sharing with us last week on praises at the gate. And this week, it's, it's our turn to have a look at what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane with sorrow in the garden. Um, this is obviously a passage that we all look at every Easter, but um, we just wanted to focus on a few things that have stood out to us. We're going to take the reading from Matthew's account. So we're looking at Matthew 26, verses 36 to 46, which I think is a really good verse to remember, 26, 36, 46. So Matthew 26, verses 36 to 46. Okay. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, my father, is, is it, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and he found them asleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will, you will not be given into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them for a second time and prayed. My father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came back to the disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. Great, so one thing that yeah, we know that God, uh, Jesus, sorry, is fully God, and he's fully man as well. Um, you know, he was born of Mary, as we look at a few months ago in Christmas. Um, but one thing we see here is we see quite a lot of Jesus' human nature. Um, you know, the verses that he became anguished and distressed. And we see a lot of stress in this passage on Jesus. Um, one of the, the commentators I was listening to on this was saying that in Luke's account, the, the word of where it says Jesus drops to his knees to pray is more of a collapsing. So we can often see that image as, you know, when you go to your bedside and you kneel and you pray, but actually it's just that uh, he collapses to his knees. I think Mark's passage says that he falls on his face to pray. So we see that out of stress, out of fatigue, because, you know, we see that the disciples fall asleep. Jesus just falls to his knees and he prays. And we even see fear in the tone you know, Jesus praying to his father saying, you know, is, is there no other way? Can, you know, can this cup not be taken from me? So we see that Jesus, we see a lot of Jesus' human nature in this passage. We see a lot of distress. We see a lot of anguish on him. So we see his human nature. But then he finishes off that prayer with, but your will be done. And this is where we see the God-given purpose of Jesus. Jesus knew his purpose on earth was to do his father's will. And this is for us as Christians, we should be fully knowing that our role as Christians is to do the will of our Father. But we see that Jesus just puts aside his, you know, his human nature, his, his stress at his lowest point to say, but your will be done, which is something that um, Leanne picked up on with the Lord's Prayer as well. Yeah, I think, you know, the Lord's Prayer is, is the prayer that Jesus gave us and, and that he taught us how, how to pray. And what stood out to me in this passage was he like John said, at his, you know, that moment of almost desperation, feeling all of that pressure, he um, he turned to God and said, your will be done. Um, and that is huge. And he taught us to pray like that in every situation. Um, and so I, I really love, because, you know, we, we look at Jesus and, and we say, you know, he lived by example. And this is such a perfect example of how to deal with situations, no matter what they are like. Um, and so that's something I really picked up from this, you know, your will be done it is, it is the way that we should be praying. Um, another thing that I, I was, was looking at and, and thinking about was, you know, the fact that it's in a garden, this garden of Gethsemane. Um, and we see um, another garden in the Bible right at the beginning, the Garden of Eden. 
And I was thinking about um, and reading about, you know, the ways that they are so contrasted um, and why it was so interesting that this is where, um, just before Jesus was, you know, going to die, that this is where, um, you know, the location it was. And, you know, in Eden, that was when sin entered the world through Adam and Eve, and it was the fall of man. Whereas um, in the Garden of Gethsemane, it was, you know, where we see the start of, of sin, you know, being overcome. Um, and we see, instead of the fall of man, we see the restoration of, of mankind. Um, interestingly as well, you know, Adam and Eve hid in that garden, whereas here we see Jesus fall to his knees and say, you know, your will be done, God. He's completely opened up and he's totally given himself over to, to God's will. Um, and yeah, so what, what it made me think of is, is, you know, we have a choice in those situations, in those moments sometimes of stress and anguish um, and you know do we choose like Adam and Eve did in that garden to compromise God's word to, to turn it to how you know we want to see our life or are we being like Jesus in, in that garden of Gethsemane and taking God's word no matter the sacrifice no matter what, how it might play out but knowing that you know it will, it will fulfill God's given purpose for our lives. Mm. Um, yeah, and I just think, you know, in, like, uh, like George said, in the face of Jesus' greatest fear, he put aside that human nature. We see the human nature, but he put it aside for his um, God-given purpose. So I think it'd be great to um, pray, pray about that and apply it to our lives. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So Father God, we thank you for Easter. We thank you for this time of year where we see that not only did um, Jesus die, but he rose again to, to give us a, a way back to you, to give us a, a way to spend eternity with you and to have our sins forgiven. And Father God, I pray that we'll be able to follow Jesus' example in this garden where he uh, put aside what was going on in his own uh, human heart and in his own human mind to say, your will be done, Father. And we just pray that we can follow that example, that no matter how hard things get, and we are living in difficult times at the minute, that we can say your will be done and that we would follow the plan that you have set out for our lives. Help us, we pray, to do that. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter, guys! <laughs>